So there's no way we can accept Muhammad as an intellectually reliable source of information uh, about Jesus, but can we accept him as a spiritually reliable source? Well, Muhammad couldn't perform miracles. According to the Quran, his only miracle was the Quran itself. The Quran, you'll, call, you'll recall, is the book filled with second through uh, early 7th century fables, not quite what most people would consider miraculous. But the problem isn't just that Muhammad couldn't perform miracles, it's that there are all kinds of spiritual warning signs in Muhammad's life. We know from early Muslim records that when Muhammad began receiving revelations, his first impression was that he was possessed by some sort of poetry spirit or demon or jinn. Uh, in fact, he was so disturbed by this experience that he tried to hurl himself off a cliff. A few years later, he delivered what are now called the, the satanic verses. So, so when he was delivering these verses to his followers, uh, he initially revealed verses saying that Muslims could pray to three goddesses, Alat, Alusa, and Manat, and that these three goddesses, we called them cranes, exalted cranes, they would carry your prayers to Allah. But a little later, Muhammad told his followers that these verses, which he had delivered as part of Surah 53, uh, weren't from God, they were from Satan. Uh, so. And, and so Muhammad blamed Satan for tricking him into revealing these verses. So according to Muslim sources, at least on this occasion, Muhammad couldn't tell the difference between something coming from, from God through the angel Gabriel and something coming from Satan. It's also interesting to note that at one point late in life, Muhammad claimed to be the victim of a magic spell that gave him delusional thoughts and false beliefs. This is from multiple passages in Bukhari where someone got Muhammad's hairbrush and used it to cast a spell on him. Now, in one of, a, lot of, a lot of what David has just said, he is actually depending not on the Quran alone, but on stories that circulated among Muslims, and they were collected in Muslim sources. They are otherwise respected sources among Muslims. They are main books of Christian, of, of Muslim uh, um, beliefs and uh, uh, history and commentary on the Quran. But that doesn't mean that all of that information is correct. So, for example, when it says that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, thought that he was possessed and thought that he was going to, uh, he should commit suicide. All of these are stories in other books apart from the Quran itself. So one, he has to say that all of these, this information is absolutely correct and this proves uh, something. But uh, even if we take it that uh, one of the Old Testament prophets uh, responded with fear and uh, misapprehension and uh, confusion when he is visited by a, a theophany, when he sees a, 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 a sort of appearance from God or an angel, well that's very normal. If it happened to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that doesn't disprove the nature of his revelation. In fact, it proves uh, the contrary, that he is trying to be careful not to become an agent for the devil. He wants to make sure uh, that he's actually getting a revelation from God. The story of the satanic verses has been disputed. Some scholars said that it's authentic, that it really happened like that, and some scholars said no. So we cannot use a disputed story like that to disprove the entire uh, career of the Prophet Muhammad on whom be peace. We have other good evidence to show that, in fact, he is uh, a true prophet of God. John Burton has actually, as an independent non-Muslim scholar, has discounted that story and shown how it could have actually developed among Muslims. It's a long explanation. Uh, no time to give the details, but I can if necessary. Uh, the, similarly, the idea that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was uh, under a magic spell. That too is mentioned in some hadiths, but it does not mean that it actually happened in history. Many Muslims think that this actually did not uh, uh, in fact happen. And even if it did happen, does the Bible say that magic is impossible? So is David as a Christian saying that magic is impossible, it couldn't have happened? And if somebody happens to be under a magic spell for a period and then he comes out as this story is saying about the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now obviously during that period of the magic spell we wouldn't rely on anything he said or did and hold him accountable. But what about the rest of his life? Are you going to discount a man just because he happened to be on a magic spell uh, or for, for a few days? Or, or even for a longer period than that. Um, Shabir points out that I don't just depend on the Quran, I, I depend on other sources for my history of Muhammad. Well, I, I really don't have any other place to go other than other Islamic sources. The Quran is not a history book of Muhammad. Uh, we, have to go to, we have to go to other sources. He said that Muhammad's possession and suicide attempts are based on other sources. Yes, but as Shabir knows, historians rely on what's called the principle of embarrassment. In other words, when they're taking these sources, they don't take everything as equally reliable. They, they, they apply 
apply certain historical principles. One of those is the principle of embarrassment. This is true in Christianity. This is true in uh, Islamic sources. And the, the idea is if people are going to make something up, they're probably going to make up something that helps their case, not embarrasses them somehow. And so the principle of embarrassment would say if you find embarrassing material, probably wasn't made up, right? If it's your enemies making up embarrassing material, that would be one thing. But if it's your followers who are, who are saying something embarrassing, it's probably true. Again, in, in Christianity, in Christian sources or in Muslim sources. Um, so when we read about Muhammad thinking that he's possessed or uh, thinking that, uh, or trying to kill himself, um, yes, we would be going to these sources, but these don't seem to be like the, the sorts of things that Muslims would invent. And so I would treat them as pretty reliable. Um, the satanic verses story, uh, Shabir says, is disputed, yes, but I have 37 Muslim sources of varying degrees of how old they are and uh, giving variations of the story. But uh, that's a lot of sources, and applying the, cr the principle of embarrassment to that uh, we'd have to say that's not the sort of thing Muslims are going to make up. You're not going to be a Muslim one day and say, hey, I'm going to make up a story about Muhammad delivering revelations from the devil and not being able to tell the difference. The only explanation for this in the Muslim sources is that it's authentic. Uh, as for the magic spell, Shabir says it may not have happened. Um, but am I saying that this automatically means that Muhammad can't be a prophet, can't be speaking the truth? No, I'm not, I'm not saying that about uh, Muhammad thinking he was possessed by some sort of poetry spirit or that, he was, uh, that he's a false prophet because uh, he tried to kill himself, or that he's a false prophet because of the satanic verses, or that he's a false prophet uh, because of the magic spell. I'm not saying he's a false prophet because of any of those. I'm saying if I'm trying to determine his reliability, his spiritual reliability, these are all factors that I have to take into consideration. I have to look at all of this and say, uh, let me put this on the scales. Uh, is this guy reliable? The criterion of embarrassment. It's not a foolproof criterion. Even in Christianity, scholars discuss this. There might have been reasons why Muslims invented the story of Zainab, maybe to prove the, the, uh, uh, the potency of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, for their own personal purposes later on, to justify their own uh, behavior. Uh, even the satanic verses, according to John Burton, there is a very good reason why Muslims would have invented this as an explanation for some passages of, of the Quran. So altogether, we have that there is nothing really in what David has, David has said. But Shabir, interestingly, said that this is the prophet similar to Deuteronomy 18.18. 18. Uh, this will tie into the uh, satanic verses story. Because let me go ahead and read chapter 18 in its, uh, chapter 18, verse 18 in this context. I will raise up a prophet from among their countrymen. So this is God. I will raise up a prophet from among their countrymen like you, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. It shall come about that whoever will not listen to my words, which he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who speaks a word presumptuously in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or which he speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. So, he gives two criteria of a false prophet right there in the passage that Shabir quoted. Shabir appealed to Deuteronomy 18.18. 18. Right there in Deuteronomy 18.20, just two verses later, we have two criteria of a false prophet. If he speaks a word that God didn't tell him to speak, and if he speaks in the names of other gods. Why is this relevant? Well, according to early, our earliest Muslim sources, Muhammad delivered a revelation saying that you can pray to Allah, Allah, and Manat, three goddesses. And he later comes back and says, that didn't actually come from God, that came from somewhere else. So, here's the point. Shabir, over these uh, past two days, has shown a lot of concern for the Old Testament and being in line with the Old Testament. I haven't talked about that too much because I reject the methodology. If the guy who rises from the dead tells me what to believe about God, I'm going with the guy who rose from the dead. But Shabir has appealed over and over again to the Old Testament, to the Torah. If we do that, Moses says, the prophet who does these two things has to die. And what this means is, if Muhammad had delivered the satanic verses, which he does, according to Muslim sources, and it's not the sort of thing Muslims would invent, if Muhammad had done that during the time of Moses, Moses would have told the people to pick up stones and stone him to death as a false prophet. Fortunately for Muhammad, he wasn't in the time of Moses. He was among pagans where he could get away with that. But if we're talking about whether Muhammad is in line with the Torah, and the Torah says he would have been, he would have been killed, probably not someone we can trust to talk about Jesus.
Uh, of course, that uh, goes back to what I said before, David. You are relying on one particular story, which may have been invented. According to John Burton, there's a perfectly good reason why Muslims would have invented that story. So why would you just simply go by the, uh, the, the one version that uh, would be critical of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, without seeing the entire uh, um, set of proofs for the Prophet Muhammad as the Prophet of God? All right. Well, you, 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 you asked why I would believe this story when there are perfectly good reasons reasons to make this up, but you, you've only cited John Burton, and John Burton believes that uh, pretty much all, all of Islamic history was invented as explanations for the Quran, and I don't take that seriously. I have a little bit more confidence than he does in the uh, ability of Muslims to do history. As far as the good reason, there's no good reason. I mean, you can apply that and say, you know, in order to explain Surah, uh, Surah 22, verse 52, that, you know, they needed some background. But you could invent all kinds of stories. You could invent all kinds of stories. The idea that Muslims, in order to explain a verse of the Quran, would say, yeah, Muhammad had to deliver a revelation from the devil in, in praising uh, three goddesses and saying we can pray to them, and then he has to come back and say, uh, the devil tricked me into doing that. It's Ten just seconds. false. God, I mean, you don't need that as an explanation. So just the fact that it's in so many Muslim sources points to an authentic original.